everybody. This is Charles at Winter Nam 2012 in Anaheim, California. I'm here with Robbie, and Robbie's from Acoust the Gibson Bozeman Acoustic Division. And uh, Gibson's celebrating a pretty important anniversary this year, and 75th anniversary of one of the most important acoustic guitars ever, right? That's right. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share it with your viewers. Uh, what we have right here to my right is a very, very sacred guitar in our guitar history. This is the original version of what the J200 looked like in 1937 when a Hollywood movie star named Ray Whitley came to visit Gibson and said, I want the biggest, wildest, meanest, loudest guitar ever built. And they created this guitar. This is a pure recreation from the custom shop at Gibson in Montana. As you see, there's old uh, hand-drawn, hand-carved script pictures that are exactly like the original that's on the display at the country music Hall of Fame in Nashville. This guitar was asked and created for by a man named Ray Whitley, who was a movie star. And on this particular guitar, we've added gems that come from the Montana soil. These are Yogo sapphire jewels from Montana embedded in gold. And one other special thing we did, if you want to pan up to the headstock one more time, if you look at the eye of the dot of the G, there's a little diamond in there. And we wanted this guitar to be precious and valuable and special because it is being given to the Country Music Hall of Fame. And they are utilizing this precious piece and others like it, which we will continue to build to create a fund, uh, fundraising for their new museum that they're creating. So it's a very worthy cause, the right model, 1937. And if you follow me over here, what I have here in my hand is a beautiful replica of the J200 as it entered the market in late 37 and 1938. This guitar has many, many more layers of binding. For those who don't know, binding is the edge inlay here and around the, the rosette. There's multiple bindings from that era. This guitar is called the Golden Age SJ200 to commemorate the age that this was released and the fact that this was the golden age of Hollywood, which spanned from 1920 to 1950. And the Hollywood stars scrambled to each have a version of this guitar after the first one was created for Ray. And everything is recreated by hand. This is painted by hand in our custom shop. The top is a very, very select Adirondack wide grain red spruce. And for those collectors who find these guitars very precious and valuable, I'm going to slowly move this down and get you to the headstock. And the headstock is an exact recreation of the size and shape of the original headstock that no longer exists, which really came from a guitar called the L5 in Gibson's history. And the truss rod cover is replicated and placed in the right area. And I'm going to turn it around slowly, and you have the original gold imperial tuners from that era. So this guitar is a very, very limited edition. There will only be 75 made globally, and it is the Golden Age SJ200 from Gibson Montana's Custom Builders. The back and sides are rosewood, and there will be a maple version later available this year. So well, that's interesting. Most people, I think, when they think J200 thing maple, and yet the very first of these were rosewood and spruce tops. Yeah. yeah, and because of that, we created a maple version of this 1938. And the maple versions became very popular by the mid-1900s, and the J200 is very famous for its projection and clarity, which comes from, partially comes from the reflection of the maple on the back and sides. So we do have the Golden Age SJ200 Maple Edition. To answer your question, most people believe that a J200 should have maple. Collectors will love the rosewood, though. That's a beautiful flame maple. 50th anniversary of another famous Gibson acoustic guitar loved by so many. This guitar originated in 1962 and was just called the Dove, for those who know that. And this Dove that you're looking at now is a replica of what happened to the Dove by 1968. And some of the features on this guitar were never done before since that time, which is like this very antique finish and very faded cherry back and sides. I'm gonna just turn it slowly. 
This is a nitrocellulose lacquer, just like the original. And the neck has a very, very narrow nut width, which happened in the late 60s. This is a precious feature for players and collectors. And as I turn it around, one of the things you might notice right away is the fact that it has an old style Gibson Tunomatic bridge from the late 60s. It's about a 1968 version of that with nylon inserts, which gives it a really warm low end. And if you just kind of move up to the pick guard, which is a vintage Dove design, there's also little screws added here that are cut off. We didn't want to screw it the whole way through the guitar because we love the sound of the guitar. But uh, this is for collectors. This is for collectability. There will only be 50 of these made. So this will be the Dove N, as in natural, which is what it was called in the late 60s. Another classic limited edition we're going to offer this year only. So is there a reason that you guys opted for the 1968 style nut width, which is so in, narrow in a very pronounced way? Yeah, it's, it's 1.525 inches, and this particular classic neck was requested by so many artists that actually we it was the artist influences that uh, made us kind of go to this particular year about late 60s. Uh, this is the kind of guitar that many artists have played over the years and recorded some of their most famous tunes with. So uh, that pretty much was an artist influenced feature. And speaking of artists, as we move through history here, this is a guitar that we developed with Jackson Brown last year. Actually, it took many years to develop. And it comes from our 1930s. And what we achieved with this, Jackson led us back to the past on what was classic about the sound and design. We created the Jackson Brown model. And it was a bestseller for us last year. And it's still doing amazing because it's, it's a magnificent sounding guitar. And one of the artists that played this was another famous artist named Cheryl Crow. Cheryl fell in love with the sound of this because it's a 1930s warm, woody tone. And so what she did, she took those, that, that drive and that inspiration and created a guitar with us in the last year that's a Southern Jumbo, which is a little bit thinner in size. This is not released yet. This is a prototype. And this is the guitar that Cheryl has been playing for the last six months in her songwriting and touring. And this will be called the, South the Cheryl Crow Southern Jumbo Special Edition. Now, why is it called a Southern Jumbo Special Edition? First of all, it's because it's based off of a 1942 Southern Jumbo. The Special Edition part was Cheryl's desire to make this guitar have the maximum volume, tone, dynamic range, and the best pickup in the world. So what we did was we put red spruce top, just like Jackson's, and just like that old J200 you saw, big wide grain. Red spruce top with red spruce bracing, which gives us a really warm and a powerful uh, tone and a powerful dynamic range. We used an open slotted bridge, which comes from that era in the 1930s and 40s, which gives us a more powerful tone. She had us create this with the classic parallelogram mother of pearl inlays, which people have been loving since 1940s. It's a standard Southern Jumbo feature. Yes, anyway. yes it is. And if you notice on the headstock, it has the old 1940s, only a Gibson good enough banner. Now there is something newer on this, even though the tuners look a little vintage, these are made by Waverly. These are the Ivroid Waverly open back nickel tuners. Very, very nicely created, uh, nicely machined tuners. And they're like Jackson's, except Jackson's are gold. What do you have in the way of electronics? You mentioned that you got a special yeah, electronics package in here. Guitar, is a special pickup that's underneath the actual bridge plate inside the guitar. And there are two very, very specially created transducers that are handmade by a man named Gary Hall. And it's called a Trans Audio Amulet System. And this is a pickup system that we didn't create. Uh, an inventor named Gary Hull created it. And Jackson Brown brought it to our attention years ago because he was performing and everyone was completely knocked out by the natural acoustic tone in large concerts that he was achieving. So we looked into this pickup with him, and now that Cheryl heard it in Jackson's model, she's converted her whole, whole group's arsenal to this pickup. It's inside the instrument, it's a low impedance system, and it's, it has a sound, well the best way I can put it, if you have a trans audio amulet in your guitar, it sounds exactly like the guitar, 
you can turn on the speaker, listen to it, turn it off, you hear the same sound with exception. It's louder when you plug it in. <laughs> so Shiro has been touched by inspiration and we're very, very proud and pleased to release this guitar later this year. She's currently writing a new album, which I hear is acoustic in nature and is more like Americana with a little bit of touch of country. So we're excited to see where that leads and this guitar will be a part of that journey for her. So. That's everything you got this year? That's new? All right. Well, Robbie? Four things. It's a very important year for you guys, and it's cool to see you guys delivered in such a big way. Yeah, These are all you. really beautiful instruments. Well, we're very lucky and touched to have this kind of history for us. And we'll be doing more of these limited editions to celebrate the J200 later in 2012. So thank you for allowing very me to share cool. that. Well, thanks, gang, for hanging out with us uh, with the Gibson Montana gang. Well, Robbie, anyway. And uh, this is Charles for PremierGuitar.com, signing off from Anaheim, Winter Nam 2012.